Good evening and welcome everybody, all the, the family and friends um, of the late Lithonolo, the Hands of Stone Lidwaba, um, our guests on the show here this evening. This is a, 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 a memorial service which is very somber and obviously we remember one of our own, a legend in his own right, uh, one of the people that has really defined the fistic scene in South Africa and throughout the world. And thank you very much everyone for, for um, um, being able to be part of this memorial service and joining us to honor this legend. And everyone can just watch online uh, on YouTube and on Facebook pages so that uh, we can all be part of uh, this celebration. Unfortunately, as you all might know, uh, we are experiencing this pandemic, you know, this COVID pandemic. So it's not um, actually um, uh, easy for everybody to be part of this, but we know that a lot of people would have been, would have liked to be part of this, but unfortunately due to COVID, um, the pandemic that we're facing the world over, um, this is how we're going to be doing do it. And, you know, thank you very much, the speakers that are here that will be part of these proceedings. Um, thank you very much for making time to be part of this uh, momentous occasion, historic occasion, celebrating the life of a legend, um, Lefonolo Hands of Stone, Lidwaba. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to go to the first speaker uh, this evening for this uh, memorial. And it's a family rep. And we, if we can ask uh, just to unmute uh, Mahoshi Lidwaba so that she can just say a few words as she remembers uh, or as he remembers, I uh, beg your pardon, the late uh, uh, champion. Evening, uh, uh, this is your boy, Mahoshi Uhuru Lidwaba all the way in Mafikeng. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, thank you very much, Eugene, for organizing the memorial, memorial service. We thank you very much. The family is very humbled that we can have people like you guys, all the organizers. Thank you, and thank you very much. May God bless all of you. Unfortunately, this is a very, very sad and hard moment for the family, but we are thankful to have had a life such as that of Hands of Stone, popularly known as Flocks to His Friends and Family. He will always be in our hearts. His memory will echo our, our heads and linger long in our hearts. We will miss him. Who will it go? Who will it snatch our people? This was a family man. We will surely miss you as a family. Known to the world over for his prowess in the boxing ring, his scientific moves, his calculative and very smart moves in the ring. He was a beautiful fighter. But we know him, we knew him differently. We knew him as a family man a provider to the family, a pater familias, an epitome of a family father, a family figure. We will always remember him. There are a lot of people here who will attest to his majesty, his magnific magnificence, in, in, magnificence in the ring. Mr. Jan Bergman is here. Mr. Notimo, the current champ, is here. I also listened to Mr. Vuyani Bungu last night on, on, on the SAF conferences show. I listened to Mr. Vuyani and I was amazed how people remember him. I mean, the stories that we had on radio, SAF yesterday were wonderful. They were so They are still, they are still alive and, and they, will, they will attest for years to come about how beautiful he was in the ring. 
And we, I'm hoping, as a family, we are hoping that they will continue to do that, that so that his memory can live long to his children. We will always remember him. As a family man, he was, he was the greatest ever. Very proud, very disciplined. The discipline that he cast on about we until it's a league. He got that from his uncle, Spoiler, who was also a boxer. His first trainer ever. He used to wake him up in the morning so that he could run around the yard. He would run kilometers around the yard in Soweto. <laughs> and from, from, from that, I learned a lot, learned a lot from his uncle, Spoiler. Uh, I, as a family man, I remember him, uh, I remember vividly that there were moments in life as the, as the Ledwabas that he was the only gainfully employed family member. And we all depended on him and he never disappointed. And his main income came from boxing. Little money that he got, he managed to sub support everybody in the family, no matter where you were. And the Ledwabas, we are known, we are a very large family but he was always there, never disappointed. And I really looked up to him. I really wanted to be like him. <sighs> he, he was a great man. We will surely miss him. Uh, he, he lives behind, this is controversial, though, but he lives behind four kids. His firstborn, Tato, I, I call him Zulu boy for obvious reasons. Your daddy loved you, and I know you know that. Copano, the first time I saw your daddy cry was when you were born. And I was shocked, I was amazed, because I never thought champions could cry. But that man was in touch with his emotions. He was never ever shy to cry for your birth. He loved you very much. The twins, wow, the twins. Your daddy could go to war for you. And I blame myself most time because I am the only one who stopped him from doing that. But I want you to know that he loved you. You know, growing up with him was, 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 was a thing of, of wonder. Very diminutive in stature. When, when, <laughs> when, when, when you met him personally, after seeing him on TV fight and drop those heavy guys, and you met him personally, people would have this notion that, ah, uh, is this the hands of stone? I mean, I'm shy. But he was, but he was, he was, he was great. The family will miss him, and the family thanks the Department of Sports for their contribution. The family thanks Boxing South Africa. The family thanks everybody else who has contributed to this thing the Zoom and the funeral. Uh, another controversial thing that I, I don't know if this is the right platform, but I, I feel obliged to mention. I would also like to thank his lifetime partner, Dineo Bukala, for being there for him. My brother loved you and my brother loved more. I would also like to thank Joyce Kumwani of TLB. My brother loved you a lot. And I want to share today with the world what his intention were, intentions were. To me, at least he shared. He was my confidante. He knows a lot of my secrets and I, I unfortunately he's taking them to the grave, but I also know most of his. He had very good intentions about his life partners. And he really wanted me to guarantee him that that thing will happen. And unfortunately he left before he could make earnest wives to two women. Uh, unfortunately that never happened. And uh, maybe the family wouldn't have loved that, but that's what he wanted. May his soul rest in peace. Um, to Boxing South Africa and, 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 and TLB, Boxing Promotions. I don't know what TLB stands for, but uh, I know he was very in touch with TLB and I know for a fact 
that you guys had plans to go forward, had plans to achieve more, had plans to develop more of boxing in, 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 in South Africa. I know he had some steps in the Northwest province where I am located. I had, I had a conversation with one guy who once worked for the Department of Sports here in the Northwest, Mr. Kennedy Musiapua. And he reminded him, he reminded me that he worked with Ledwaba Fox on, on, on some development programs here in the Northwest. To TLB, I say his dreams was to have something here at the side in Africa. And please continue and ensure that uh, his dreams is seen. To the family, Madi we have lost a giant. And I know, I don't want to take most of your time, but I know the world is going to miss him. I've listened to Radio FM last night and I was amazed people were calling from all over. Clips from many Pekio were played, messages from many Pekio were played, and uh, I was touched. I touched a lot of, touched a lot of people in, in South Africa and the world over. We will always miss him, and I know the, lost has, the world has lost a gem in my brother, Hands of Stone, Ledwaba. Over to you, Eugene. knows him better than anybody and uh, we thank you sir for for all those kind words and and what you actually said about this legend and obviously he's been very dear to the family and he is um, as much as he is your loss he is a loss to to us in the boxing fraternity to south africa to the rest of the world um thank you very much for those kind words and we now go to our next uh, speaker uh, to, to make a dedication in memory of uh, this legend. And we have uh, the Deputy Director General Sports Development from the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, uh, Ms. Sumaya Khan. Um, let's hand over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Program Director. Uh, let me greet uh, the family of Mr. Letwaba, and let me also acknowledge the presence of all well wishes and uh, the people of South Africa who have descended on this platform to pay their requests to our boxing icon. Um, and I greet you a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is with a very, very heavy heart that I address you today as a representative, sorry, as a, as a representative of the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture, and as a representative of the Minister of Sport, Arts and Culture, Ms. Natim Tetwa. As I indicated, ladies and gentlemen, it is with a heavy heart that we address you this evening. No words can comfort us as we con are confronted with this untimely loss of a giant of sport in South Africa. I'm really humbled and at the same time, I'm very honored and privileged this evening to be able to pay respects to an icon of the sporting fraternity. We face unprecedented, unprecedented times as a country we have been in lockdown for 469 days due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We are now into the third wave of the pandemic. It pains us to see so many lives that have been lost through this deadly pandemic. 
And as a department of sport, arts and culture, we learned with shock of the untimely passing of a legendary boxing championship, Hands of Stone Litwaba. With a professional boxing record so impressive, having fought about 43 times and winning 36 of those fights, losing only six and drawing one, it's no mean feat. He was, he, he was an, epit an epitome of what is always advocated that sport helps us to unite as a nation, that our sports personalities are role models that serve to motivate our youth, give them hope and motivating them to engage in physically active, healthy and positive lifestyles. The life he led as a sportsman, as a mentor, as a community activist, gives the nation a reason to be so proud and hopeful. He was truly a sporting ambassador who represented the country, his uh, code of sport with such dignity and pride. We also appreciate his contribution to the promotion of women in boxing and the efforts he made to help women boxers pursue their career. Ladies and gentlemen, we are also very touched by the many, many tributes we have been reading. And this indicates the immense respect that he commanded from people not only in South Africa, but at the, in the world at large. Uh, he's been described by many as such a stunning and neat world champion. Uh, he's traveled the world and he's made his mark wherever he went. And it's, as I say, I'm, and I'm saying it again, it pains us that at a young age of 49 years, uh, he had to lose his battle to this COVID-19 pandemic. I think we need to live with the memories that he leaves behind. You know, people would ask, why, the, where does this name come from? Hands of stone. And I think, you know, Every generation is inspired by the generations before them. And this nickname came from a very, very uh, highly, highly respected and successful boxer, Roberto Duran, who was a professional boxing champ um, um, during 1968 uh, to about 2001. And he was one of the rare people who held world champions championships in four different weight classes. Um, and, you know, he was undisputed in, in many of the areas that he uh, fought in. And he was known as a versatile and a technical brawler and pressure fighter, which earned him a nickname, which, you know, uh, in the Spanish language was Manos de Perdia, which means hands of stone because of his formidable punching power and his excellent defense. So at the same, like him, like Roberto Duran, Mr. Litwaba became hands of stone because he was also known as being a versatile technical brawler, a pressure fighter, and hence his name. I think besides being just a boxer, we also acknowledge and appreciate the fact that he was an epitome and, and a true shining example of lifelong participation in sport because sport was a way of life for him. He was not only an, an athlete, he was also a trainer, he was a mentor, he was a, 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 you know, a, a philanthropist in the community that endeared himself to everyone, that motivate everyone and help to uplift people. So I think this is what sport teaches us, that yes, sport to some may just be fun and games, but for many of us, it is serious business. It is our whole, it's what your whole life revolves around. And this is what we found in our champ, that he used sport to uplift people, he used sport to improve the lives of people around him. Ladies and gentlemen, I think when we read the tributes, 
It's some. It's these memories that will will always live with, with us. It is a sad time for us. Uh, we've read of the journalists speak about how terrible this news was when they heard of the passing away of our champ. You know, and talking about him as the stunning world champion who emerged from Soweto to to top a bill in Las Vegas. And he had such a fine career. I mean, he's been one of South Africa's greatest, greatest, greatest boxers. We've had journalists who've, had, who've also written to say how sad they were on hearing of his passing. And he will always remain one of the best boxers that has ever graced our shores. And he'll, for, he'll forever be remembered for his brilliant boxing tactics. You know, and importantly, they also appreciate and acknowledge what a great boxer he was, that his ambition was to impart his boxing knowledge to all the upcoming boxers that he came into contact with. And I think he lived that, that he managed to actually influence and be a role model to so many young up and coming boxers. And ladies and gentlemen, I think, you know, if you look at his track record and you look at the many people who respected him so highly, you look at all of the former boxers whom he has worked so closely with, it tells of a man who was so passionate about boxing, who was so passionate about sport. And it is truly, truly a void that we will fill in our, we will feel in our lives and in the communities because he's touched so many people. And we know that at the time of his death, he was working with Joyce Kungwane at, in TLB Boxing, and he was able to produce good boxes as a trainer. And I must indicate, ladies and gentlemen, that on hearing of the passing of uh, our legend, Mr. Letwaba, the Minister of Sport, Arts and Culture, Mr. Nati Mchetwa, had indicated that on behalf of the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture, I wish to join the nation, the boxing fraternity, and the Ledwaba family in mourning the untimely death of yet another role model in South African sport. We will remember him as one of those heroes who selflessly shared their talent with the rest of the nation. No amount of tribute or comfort will ever grant the Ledwaba family and friends any comfort, especially during these difficult times. But we urge and we pray that the family continues to put their trust in the Almighty as he has a plan for each and every one of us. May the great and wonderful soul of our legend, our boxing icon, rest in eternal peace. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We will forever remember this legend of the boxing fraternity. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Khan. Um, these are really, really touching words. And uh, obviously, he's a man that he has been known all over the world, as you have said. And uh, it's quite a monumental loss. It's a, it's a very big loss for the family, for the boxing fraternity, for South Africa, for Africa and the world in general. So uh, may his soul rest in peace. You know, he's, uh, he will forever be remembered. Thank you very much for those words, Mrs. Khan. And at this moment, we, you know, we're gonna uh, uh, bring in our acting CEO, BSA, Ms. Cindy Nkomo. Uh, she's worked with uh, Ledwaba for so many years. She knows Ledwaba. she's, being supportive to, to boxing. She's one of the persons that we go to for assistance, for help in terms of uh, when we want to have tournaments and when we want assistance for boxers, for licenses. So over to you, Mrs. Uh, Cindy Ngomo. I'm not sure if uh, Cindy is uh, here, uh, Cindy Como. If she's here, maybe she can indicate. Otherwise, we can go to the next speaker on um, on our program, and that will be the former trainer for 
the hands of stone, uh, the legendary trainer, Mr. Norman Shabani. Good evening, people of South Africa. The memorial service of my young man. I couldn't believe that today I'll be sitting here and thinking of, hey, Lidwava. In fact, I was the last one to be with him all the way. In fact, he was the one who was encouraging me that please, 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 that is Shabani, take care of yourself. Please, you must do this, you must do that. But my heart was with him because it was said, I could see that my boy was really going because things were not so good for him, really. Even up to today, I'm still at home. The doctors gave me the insurance that please don't move, you stay home. Stay in isolation, otherwise things won't be good for you. So since that day till today, I've never moved. I'm at home. I'm missing my son. I don't know what to say. I'm heartbroken a lot. To the nail and the children, please be strong. I know, that's what Flokes wanted us. He was always complaining about us, forgetting about himself. All what he was saying, please, it's a, two, one, two, three. Uh, you know, it's a please, give it all, do all pilel and that. At the meantime, he's the one who was in danger. Oh, my Lord, may the good Lord be with me to all the boxers that were in the gym with us, from Dingan, Jan Berkman, Dijaum Lefiani, Peter Malinga, David Putzani, Wiki, oh, the list goes on. But what can I do? It's the end of the world for my boy. Boys from Ghana, Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, all of them, they've been phoning me, sending me messages they can't believe. And this is what happened to our early daughter. Oh, look, I don't know what to say, my way. I'm going to miss you a lot. You did a lot for me. Yes, oh boy, may the good Lord be with you. May your soul rest in peace. Thank I think so. I can't take it anymore, Baba, jokes. Always is that is one. I say, folks, thank you, Mr. Savani. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Savani, thank you very much.
for for this uh, um, really tearful memory of um, this legend, this Hall of Famer. You know, Mr. Shavani has worked tirelessly. You know, he knows uh, 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 Lefonolo when he was still a young man. And it's understandable. You know, it's very difficult to have him talking. You know, it's like losing his, um, his son. You know, he, you know, Sonal was like his son. He grew up, he grew up under this legend, Mr. Norman Shabani. And we are thankful, sir. We are thankful for all that you've done for our boxers. We are, we're thankful for what you've done for specifically this young man, Lithonolo, hands of stone, Lithuaba. You've made him an icon. You've made him a well-known, well-renowned legend. And we thank you. We thank you, Mr. Shavani. For all this hard work you've put in. And I know wherever he is, you know, he celebrates that he was part of your family. And I know your family as well. Um, you know, they, 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 you got nice, uh, a, a nice family. And they were very close to Lidwaba. And even the Dwabas family, you know, thank you very much. Bo Ausidineo, you know, everybody in the family, thank you very much. Thank you for giving us and sharing this legend with us. And with those few words, um, thank you, Mr. Shabani. We go over to the next item on our program. And we've got friends, you know, his friends. He only he had a lot of friends. In fact, we can we can call a lot of people and they will attest the fact that they were friends to this legend. But we've got a Ndiviwe first um, to, to share with us his friendship with this legend and how they have lived and, you know, maybe remember some of the best moments they've had and some of the worst mo moments they've had. Um, Ndiviwe, please, if you can... Uh, Come in, and then thereafter we'll have uh, Jan Berkman. That's late. Hello? I'm not sure if I'm audible. Yes, you are, the viewer. You can continue. I'm not... Um, thank you, Program Director, for this opportunity. Greetings to all the esteemed guests and all protocols observed. Greetings and condolences to the Lidoba family. Condolences to Aus Dineo and the children. Condolences to the Boxing Fraternity. Condolences to friends, neighbors, people of Soweto and all those who knew and were associated with Lono Rodwaba. I was saddened by the unexpected and untimely passing of Lokes. I used to call him Lokes. I was shocked and confused. And I was asking myself so many questions. Here is a man who had dreams, who had aspirations. He was a family man, who was physical fit. He had a young wife, he had a bright future as a boxing trainer was our legend and he was living a healthy life. Well, I answered myself, you know, in my language, in Isikosa, they say, Isikia Isikia Asikia. And I then comforted myself with words from Tsepo Tsula, Tsepo Tsula songs, Hulu Kile, Mudimu Yense Tatua Hai. You know, program director, Kosa people say, Isikia Isikia Asikia when someone with good manners and behavior dies. So they use this idiom. They use uh, this idiom when someone who they were expecting a lot from dies. This idiom is from that culture of putting beautiful and expensive dishes away in a locker. These dishes are only taken out when a visitor comes or they are taken out only on special occasions. So these dishes are not utilized by anyone and any day. They are reserved for these special people. So Clogs is like now Isitia Esitia. He is now not available to us in this world. We can't benefit from his services anymore.
he is now on the service only to the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, a gentle giant has As a friend has his friends, so I was asked to speak on behalf of. I protested until yesterday that no, 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 no. Clocks was not my friend. I was not friends with Clocks. I said, "Oh, this. that man was my older brother." They overpowered me, and they put him to come and speak. But it's not difficult to, for me to speak about Clocks. It is easy. But so growing up close to each other and seeing each other almost daily meant we were bound to be close. Sabafana Basikas, from the same street. We were neighbors, in fact. So they loved boxing. They were mad about boxing. And this made the whole family as well. Growing up in so to, to love folks. I remember I was not even 10 years old when we would wake up in the early hours of the morning. Of the Roberto Duran, who's from Panama, the, the deputy just spoken about uh, um, Roberto Durana. And then we would watch the likes of Simpio Maticane and the likes of Paul Ditao, Udiaro Ramolifiana, after soccer games. So that was To many um, like you, when I was a student at Medunsa, at the res, I think it was a cold, I'll never forget. It was a cold June in 2001. He was my hero, man. He was an inspiration. A guy from my street, my neighbor, who became a world boxing champion. But what did it mean to me personally to know him? To me personally and to us as friends. For me, it was a privilege to have known him. You know, growing up in a poor township like White City above in Soweto in the 80s was very difficult. It was a time of apartheid. There were protests. There was violence. We were surrounded by poverty. And there was gangsterism. In his song, um, Children of the Ghetto, uh, Philip Bailey sings how children of the ghetto are filled with misery. But how inside the ghetto there's unity and they are cancelled for sorrow and no misery at times. He further edges that Children of the ghetto should keep their heads up to the sky and it's going to be all right if they keep their heads up. So yes, when I reflect around the community of a poor community of White City, Jabav and Soweto in general, we're poor, but there was a lot of inspiration in the ghetto. I mean, we shared food with neighbors. At Locke's family, they won't sleep hungry if there's food at home. We won't sleep hungry if there's food at, at his family. A neighbor will never be buried without dignity, even if they don't have funeral covers. Boys will protect girls from bad boys. We also saw how our fathers worked hard, waking up early in the morning to catch trains to work in Jobek. So there was a spirit of Ubuntu and a sense of social solidarity. So indeed, Champ inspired many and made us aspire to be better people in society. Personally, I learned a lot from Champ as well. I got inspired and felt that my dreams are valid and achievable. Now, one would ask, so, Shoks, the Shonol Daba was a boxer and I'm now a medical doctor. So how can a boxer inspire someone to be a medical doctor? Now, that's a beauty of growing up in the township, in the ghetto, and knowing people like, um, like Shoks. 
You know, I really wanted to be a medical doctor, but I was from a poor family. I was attending a township school, Morris Isaacson. I was from a rough township. So that background makes you doubt that this dream of yours is ever achievable. Then as you doubt that, is it possible that I can become a doctor from this family, from this castle, from this poverty? Then you see your neighbor on TV, right? Uh, you see your neighbor achieving dreams. You see your neighbor training hard almost every day. You see him waking up in the morning. Uh, uh, in the morning, he's running around the streets of Soweto. He sometimes recruits you to run, even though you are lazy at times. You, he recruits you, he goes to Nasrak and Deep Roof to chop trees, you know. So when you used to beat people and they will reminisce on pain, I knew I, I remains on pain. I knew that ah, it's those trees from, from chopping those trees in Nasrak and Deep Roof. Now you see that guy um, becoming a provincial champion. You see him becoming a South African champion. You see him beating dangerous people from East London. That makes you believe. I mean, if you, even if you're from a poor family, it makes you believe that, yes, here is my neighbor achieving great things against the odds. Folks can do it. We can also do it. We are from the same environment. So Champ inspired many other people in Jabavu and around Soweto in general. So for me, that is his greatest legacy, inspiring the children of the poor and the working class to dream. You know, also through talks, I learned that things don't come easy. You have to sacrifice. You have to work hard and focus on your dreams to make it. You will wake up early. You sleep late. You train hard. You don't give up. So another thing I learned from talks is love. Talks was a loving man. He was a loving friend. I remember I was a student at Medunsa. Uh, thank you very much, uh, the viewer. You know, it's it's been quite uh, um, a, a very sombre uh, testimony uh, in memory of uh, this legend. We thank you very much. And I, I know that uh, you know him so well and there's a lot you can say about him. But uh, because of time, we need to move on. And thank you very much for all the, the tributes and the messages on, on, uh, on the Facebook pages. Uh, we thank you very much. We know you are all with us and obviously thinking about this great man who was, the great man who is, a legend, Hall of Famer, the Thorn Hall of Hands of Stone, Le Dwaba. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to move on to, uh, we're going to move on to our next speaker here, who is a friend and also a former world champion and somebody who knows him very close. And um, we've had chats with him and... Uh, He's been really, really supportive and he's been really, really very close to Lithuan on the hands of Stone Lithuaba. Uh, here is Jan Kit Gullivan Berchman. You can unmute, uh, Jan. Just unmute, unmute yourself. Yes. Um, good evening, everybody. As you know, we, myself and Nidwaba, and Joyce, and our do doctor friend, were, were creating TLB, and we are very grateful for that. I'm very grateful to share with, with, with my friend Dikwaba on TLB. I'm very heartbroken to, I just couldn't take it. It's very hard for me, but Lidwaba, I know him from young, we were young boys, both of us. I'm two or three years older than him. And uh, we we went through amateur boxing together. After amateur boxing, when we turned pro, 
we've started getting close to each other in the professional area. He used to help me with sparring and a lot and, 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 and shows me how to demolish the body. He was a very, very good body puncher. And all I can say, my condolences to the family, to the Lugaba family. He was a, like a brother to me. I lost brother, but I'll have to deal with it. I know he knows, he knows better than I know now because of where he is. I hope and I know he must be in peace. I am so devastated, but all I can say is I'm going to miss my friend. He's been a very good friend. There was a time five or six years back, I got sick, uh, I had mentally disturbance and something I get through stress. I end up with him, he helped me. He was a, a real brother to me. I will miss clothes. And all I can say, it's very hard for me to deal with it, but I'm very grateful. I spent time with him and we were very good buddies. What made me so emotional that Uncle Norman is our father. I'm, I'm very devastated that Uncle Norman, but I, I, I'm very grateful that he's fine. It's getting better. Yeah, that's our father. I'm very good. And, and I'm happy that Uncle Norman is getting better. And I know God will keep him through this for him to get better. I I pray every day and I pray that there must be comfort for all the family members of Lituaba because when me and him were very good buddies, I'm going to miss him. And I have to deal with it, but thanks very much. All I can say, Lituaba is one of the best boxes we could ever had in South Africa. Very disciplined guy. I am what I am today because I, I learned a lot from him. And uh, I miss him deeply. That's all I can say. Until we meet again, my brother, may your soul rest in peace. And everything of the best to the family. Thank you very much. Thank you, South Africa, for understand for, for supporting the boxing fraternity. I thank you all. Thank you very much. Um, we know how close you were with uh, the champ. Um, you know, very sad times indeed. You know, it's uh, um, we can see teary eyed, the emotions. Um, you know, this just testimony that, you know, the legacy of this man, of this great man, 
that we will never see again. You know, and he's given so much to the sport. He's given so much to 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 the world. You know, he's uh, he's done the best he could. You know, he's tried everything he could to be the best he can ever be. You know, Lidwaba was such a humble, humble personality. Uh, he loved people. He loved uh, his friends. He loved, if he loved you, you know, he showed that love would always uh, come out. You know, he would always be the, the person to really be honest in whatever he does. And uh, we will miss him. You know, it's it's actually what uh, John is saying right now. We can understand, you know, and, and, you know, I think also it actually challenges us as as uh, people that, you know, we never knew how great this man is. And we do not know how great some of our people are, especially our boxers who who have won world titles. And we don't actually have a Hall of Fame for them. You know, we actually say he's a Hall of Famer, but we need to have that in essence whilst this legends are alive and uh, with that um we're gonna call on now um next uh the acting ceo of boxing south africa uh, miss sending Ngomo, to share a few words with us over to you miss Ngomo. Apologies for joining uh, a little bit uh, late. Um, I was just stuck in the lobby in the wrong link. So my sincere apologies. Uh, all protocol observed. Um, and I also just want to highlight, just in case it has not uh, uh, come through, that uh, the chairperson of, of Boxing South Africa, Mr. Lutando Jack, is um, listening through um, a Facebook. Unfortunately, was not able to get into uh, into into the meeting. Um, I find myself um, as the acting CEO today, uh, obviously in attendance um, on official duty, uh, representing uh, Boxing South Africa. Um, however, I find myself also in a bit of a conflict. Um, because I am expected to assume the official position and be the voice of the regulator uh, of uh, professional boxing in South Africa. Uh, the conflict, however, comes in that I grew up um, in a boxing-loving home. Um, and therefore, me, uh, Mr. Lithohonolo Lidwaba, was an icon um, that um, we looked forward to um, on weekends as a black sport uh, uh, boxing was. Um, and an icon he was, and so even when I finally met him and interacted uh, with him, as now an official um, uh, 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 representative of Boxing South Africa, I could not divorce myself from the little girl that saw this icon. And uh, I struggled for a very, very long time on how to address him because he was not to me a trainer. He was still the man that really gave us much entertainment and really placed uh, South Africa on the map uh, with his prowess. I resolved uh, the conflict by not putting myself in an awkward position. And therefore I decided that I will call him Dadili Dwaba and I would always refer to him as such. And I do recall at some point saying that you know, people think when you are young and uh, we are just a few years apart. And I would relate to him why I find it very difficult to call him on a first name basis. Um, it came really as a shock um, uh, when the news came through of his uh, passing and almost uh, unbelievable because you do have uh, people that you think uh, death should never be associated uh, with. And uh, this also was confirmed with how we struggled to put together in words who Mr. Little Honolulu Lidwaba is, because certainly it felt like we we're reducing the icon to just a few words, and he was more than that. 
So therefore, um, I request today not to really dwell on the history or the man and who he is, because that would be diluting really the many uh, testimonies that have been um, put through here. Um, and I think we are gathered here today and by the number of responses, it is confirmation that this was no ordinary man. But I think what I would like to uh, do today is just to um, thank Ndateli uh, Dwaba for the contribution that he's made to the sport. Um, the contribution that he's made um, to the country through boxing, and not only when he was active um, as a boxer, but also the contribution that he's made following um, him uh, retiring as a boxer and when he took up a license to be um, a trainer. I know that uh, he's contributed immensely on many other boxers' uh, successes and he's developed um, a champions. And until his untimely death, um, he was still doing what he loved and channeling it differently. I think South Africa um, uh, today um, is in realization really of just how much um, and, and the hard times that we're living uh, in, how much they are robbing us of the many, uh, many contributions that we would have had um, in years to come. Because I do believe that other than just being a trainer, there's many more um, things that we could have leveraged and um, and uh, and be able to to uh, uh, to get from uh, uh, and that just to share a little bit and without making this about boxing South Africa. Um, there's ma there, there is many there are many things that um, uh, uh, just the administrations, particularly the board, is putting in place, and we are aware that some of this work we will not be able to do solely as administrators who are probably more experienced in terms of administration and are learning about the sport. And therefore we would need the likes of Ndadeli Dwabo to contribute to such. So it is really a great loss and, um, and, and one that uh, uh, really comes at a time that his expertise, but also his passion uh, for boxing is really needed. Um, I want to extend our condolences uh, to the family, to, to friends, to many boxers that really uh, were always, um, you know, around uh, under Deli Dwaba, those who looked up to him as a source of inspiration, which he was, uh, to the entire boxing fraternity. Indeed, death marks the end of life, but it is not entirely uh, how your life ends, but how you lived it during uh, 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 your entire um, uh, time on earth. And there is no doubt that he lived it fully, he enjoyed it, and to a certain point, his passing comes around at a time when he is immense in the spot of, of boxing. And with those words, um, send my condolences and um, we just hope and pray that the youngsters that are currently in boxing will not see this as the end, but as a responsibility to take up the baton and continue from where the legend has left off. Thank you, Program Director. Thank you very much, uh... Uh, Ms. Cindy Nkomo, uh, we really appreciate your your in-depth uh, uh, message of condolences, you know, on this memorial for the late great uh, uh, champion, uh, Lithuan Ola Hands of Stone Lithuaba. And thank you all, you know, boxing followers, all the licensees and the fans on Facebook for the kind messages of uh, condolences that you're sending to the family. We really appreciate um, with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to the next speaker on the program, and this is uh, we're going to.
call the the uh, uh, the former world champion and current WBA champion Kolisani Nomeva Dongeni. Just unmute yourself, uh, Tolisani. Yes. Can you hear me now? All right. Ah, my name is Bulisele. We family are going to have. Now, go back to the band. The band of Paga. Take the meeting. Now, go back to the band of Buli. Ababukele. Um, my name is Tolisani Dongen, a professional boxer. Oh, he's a double champion now, Pan African. So um, today it is a great honor to be part of this historical uh, memorial service for Mr. Ledwaba, who we know that we was here. So when Kuvagala Umpanga, when Yonge Isenze Galen, I was in East London, I was in Eastern Cape, and I had to come back to Jobek and make sure that I pay my respect to, to the legend. He's not only um, a South African legend, he's, he's a well-known um, um, professional boxer who is one and the only boxer who managed to fight Manny Pacquiao, and, and, and we know he respects him, and he sent his condolences to the family, and we're also grateful for that. So on behalf of the boxers, the boxer I met for oh, Mr. Lituaba for 2018 before like I've been looking at him for a, a long time as a young boxer Sakulai, and used to watch his fights and stuff uh, but to, to be actually working hands to hand with him and, and very closely it was when the TLB started and I was the main bout of their first ever um, uh, tournament so it was a great honor to me to work with those guys. Um, obviously, to be mentioned along. Kolisani, can you talk names. closer to your mic? We can't hear you. All right. Can you hear me now? Okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah, continue. Can you hear me now? Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Hello? Okay. I'm not sure if you can, you can hear me now, but um, today it is obviously a time where we have to say deepest condolences to the family of um, Lidwaba and Mom Joyce and the TLB and obviously to all the boxers that are part of the of the of the TLB and obviously all South African boxing fraternity. I'm one of the luckiest boxers to obviously sit down and talk to him many a times and and I have already uh, gained a lot of advices from him. So in the Fundega Kulu, who is university and other Zonge and the founder over what is boxing and how 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 they were doing boxing in the olden days. So I'm lucky to obviously um have him in my life and share him with his family and obviously get uh, to celebrate him while he was still alive. And also I believe by family I can I um have celebrated him and celebrated with him many a times before uh, today because now he's no more and we know that um, he'll only, he'd only be with us. Um, so, see, 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 and so so 
ufage ukale lukulu gugumse benzu etu. Na mtanje sizi breadwinners. We know sizi champions. People are calling us champions because of the input and obviously the work that they are doing behind the scenes. And, and in, on behalf of all the boxers that have been working with him, we want to say, Ulale mutolo prasoksi. Mkats umse benzu wako ufezile. Mkazo lako ufezile. Kupumle. Si abule laka kulu. Thank you very much, uh, Kolisani. Thank you for the kind messages. And, uh, you know, we he, he will actually, Uli Doaba will forever be missed. Uh, a true legend, as we, you know, it's uh, as, as uh, the, the, all the, the, the Facebook followers attest on their messages. Thank you very much, those kind messages to family. Um, thank you, we appreciate. And we will go now to the next speaker. We're going to be... Um, you know, coming to the conclusion of this memorial service, we've got only two speakers left to go. Uh, we'll start first with uh, uh, also a former champion, uh, one of the people that uh, actually uh, contributes a lot to, to the sport of boxing, Andre Teise. Good evening, everybody. Um, I really don't know where to start with this um, sad news that we received this week uh, about Brale Dwaba passing away. And I think we need to realize what boxing lost, what the boxing fraternity lost. Um, we lost a real, a real champion, a real gentleman of the sport, a man that gives his whole heart to the sport. A man that taught young kids, taught the older people also boxing. And for us to understand boxing, uh, what this man did for, for all of us. I was one of the lucky ones that went with him to Denmark and fought on the undercard with him. He was the main fight, I was the undercard fight. So we came a very, very long way that we come back and since then, we've been friends. Uh, Brown Norman was with us. And um, it was very really so when we received all this news of late. And I think we need to give condolences to the family, our condolences to Joyce, to TLB. And I think it is something that we're not going to get over. But I think we need to keep this man, this legend, in our minds. We need always to talk about him. Let the word go out there to the boxing fraternity that knew him and the ones that didn't knew him. Let's open up and talk about this man. This man is a real, real, real legend. I think I'm not going to keep you guys too long because I think it's a hard sort of time we're going through. And this just happened far too, far too quick. This man left, left us too early. I think we're still going to talk over the next 20 years about this man, how good he was. And as Jan Bergman said, this man could kill the body. And I want, I hope he taught the new generation how to do what he did. And I think he did because this man left the sport. And Prasipo, it's a, it's a sad time for us here. Um, and I'm going to say goodbye now. I'm going to think, leave it over to you guys. Thanks for everything, the Boxing Fraternity. Thank you for everything. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Andre Tays. Uh, really sad times indeed. You know, um, it's not easy to forget somebody like uh, Lefano of Hands of Stone, Letoaba. And I'm sure everybody that's watching uh, this live memorial online, you know, special thanks to Sfiso Netsandama, who actually helped us to put this together. And thank you to everybody that's actually been a part, part of this, uh, you know, uh, uh, unforgettable memorial service for our late legend, Hall of Famer, Lefonolo Hands of Stone Lidwaba. 
And we're going to now move on to um, the next speaker, which is actually the last speaker before we get announcements on on uh, the actual funeral to lay our our legend. Uh, but we'll call on somebody who's who's been very dear to to Ledwaba, you know, has always been with Ledwaba throughout, um, even with TLB boxing promotions. And they've actually uh, set the bar in terms of the promo the, 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 the tournaments that we saw them putting together and actually being very active as a promotional outfit. And, um, you know, we know she's been through quite a lot. You know, she's actually been through uh, the whole saga of Lidwaba getting sick and being with him uh, even through the last hour. And we call on now, um, uh, you know, I call it the president of boxing, you know, Mama Joyce Kungwani. Okay, Joyce Kungwani. Evening to our friends. Um, yeah, I thought I would have strength to 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 talk about Lisa Onolo. You know, um, it's not easy. It has not been an easy week for me because um, he's my partner um, in the business and he was very close. We have this other special relationship. Um, I would not talk about Lidwaba and boxing today, but I felt it's important that I share the short travel or the short path that uh, he went through or suffered before he could leave this world. Um, in, my, in May, we were preparing for the tournament. There was that happened actually in, in June in commemoration of Youth Month. And he sent me a WhatsApp and says, Joyce, I'm sick. You know, because I was so clouded with the preps of the tournament, I just asked him what's wrong because he was at his place and I was at my place. And I said, What's wrong? And uh, I immediately called to check on him. At that time, he was not that sick as compared to in the week of the tournament. When I spoke to him in the week of the tournament on the, on the, the Wednesday, actually I wanted him to help one of the boxers from Northwest whom we discovered on the Tuesday that uh, his trainer had actually not licensed. So I got a feedback from VSA to say the trainer cannot be in the corner with the boxer because he had not licensed. And then I immediately called the trainer to say, but uh, why must it be VSA telling me that you're not licensed? And then the guy said to me, no, mama, I thought I was going to talk to Ligaba to take my boxer to the corner. And then I called the Ligaba immediately and we discussed it. But uh, in our conversation, I could tell that Ligaba is not well. And I immediately told him that he was excited actually when I said that uh, the guy from Northwest Strike says he's requesting that you take his boy to the corner because he's not licensed. And uh, Lidoma got excited. And you know, when you know a person, you can tell even over the phone that the person is not well. And then I told him immediately that uh, Lelo, you're not well. That's how we used to call him Lelo. You're not well. And he said to me, no, but by Saturday, I will be okay. I said, okay, let's talk in the morning and then I will see how you're feeling. In the morning, we spoke, I could tell he's not well. I immediately called one of my friend doctors and requested a script for Lisa Hono. Then we met in, in, in Orlando. 
with the boxers and trainers who were supposed to go and do their testing before the fight. I immediately spoke to the nurses who were helping us and I said, I've got a trainer who must come and also do the testing, but he's not looking well. Well, luckily we did not allow everybody at the same time into the world. We were taking them in pairs. And then I called Lelo to say, um, I'm trying to arrange something for you. And at that time, I was planning to at least go pick him up and take him to Mel Park Hospital for him to do, uh, to be, uh, to do the COVID testing. And when I called to say, uh, this is what I'm arranging, he said, no, I'm coming there. And I asked, with whom? Because he told me he couldn't drive. And then, I said, he said with Brannox. And I knew immediately I got the steps. Okay, when they arrived, I said, just send me an, uh, an SMS or WhatsApp. Okay, he called me. Then we went outside to the car uh, for him to, for the doctor, for the nurses to get the specimen from him. And when I saw him, I got broken because I could tell the man is sick. And my question to him was, but Lelo, you never said you were sick. And he looked at me, I said, I need to take you to the hospital. And his response was that I'm not going to the hospital. And I asked him, why don't you want to go to the hospital? You know, there's so many things that uh, we hear when people go to hospital. Unfortunately, he got his mind set that he's, he's not going to the hospital. And then I said, fine, I will go and get treatment for you. I went to, to this camp to get treatment and Branox to, took him to the house. And then after getting the treatment, I went to the house. I took the medication. I checked with other guys like Andrew to say, Andrew, but you spoke of this uh, specific uh, treatment. Where can I get it? And Andrew said, I'll organize that for you, Joyce. On Friday, and the driver said to me, I think I'll be ready on Saturday. I said, never, that is not going to happen. Well, unfortunately, we got the result that uh, he tested positive. But his heart was at the tournament. You know, throughout the, the, the tournament, it was difficult for me. I had to show a strong face uh, for the tournament to finish. And then knowing that I've got a sick person and he kept asking me, please send me the updates. Send me what, what. And I talked to other friends to say, can you please yeah, speak to the government because he's not well. And uh, he doesn't want to listen. I say, he must go to the hospital. OK, then we can pass with the talking on the phone because already he had tested positive. I could not go closer to him. But uh, the following week, on a Thursday, I could tell over the phone that the man is getting down, he's deteriorating. And uh, I felt it's time that I insist that he goes to the hospital. I communicated with the family members to say, the family is not well, I think it's time that we take him to the hospital. I called uh, the chairperson of BSA, notifying him. We called Dr. Ngatani and Dr. Slepe, and Dr. Slepe said we should bring him to Mr. Building. I spoke to the brother and say, okay, because I'm in Pretoria, let's meet at Leicester. Then in the, the organized transport, I met them at Leicester Hospital or Leicester Building. He was attended to by Dr. Slepe. And uh, I could see that the man is not well. Okay, he got... Uh, 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 IV treatment, he got oxygen because he was struggling from breathing. And then the doctor said, no, okay, he's fine, we see, he looks better for me. Please just get him treatment, he goes back and then you bring him again on Sunday. But I was not convinced. Looking at him, I saw the man was sick. Then on Friday, he called me and said, I need oxygen. And then we started chatting by uh, um, voice notes. And those voice notes traumatized me. I immediately drove and called 
the aunties and the brother and said, let's meet, guys, it's high time we do something because the funnel is just getting worse. I called my friend, we drove to White City, we found the aunties and the brothers and the other sisters. Then we went to the house. We tried uh, what we bought, you know, when a person is sick, people will say, okay, try this. Yeah, we tried to uh, source those uh, mobile oxygens we couldn't find. And around four o'clock, I just looked at him and said, it's not really not well. Let's take you to the hospital. And the response was that, thank you very much. We tried lifting him and took him into the car. Um, when we, after putting him in the car, then we moved all of us coincidentally. And uh, okay, he was lying on the uh, on the on the seat. But as we turned, when I looked back, I realized that he's actually up. And at that moment, he was gasping. I could not tell everybody that of what I saw. And uh, the lady from next door who was uh, going to drive him, when she got into the car, Mesara, she realized that the family was not talking or written. And then she called all of us to say, no, please can somebody come and talk to him. And uh, we discovered that actually he was his normal. Unfortunately, at that stage, we were on denial. Then we rushed him to the hospital, to Yesodi, and uh, on arrival, he was confirmed dead by the doctor. Um, it pains me tonight to can talk about a friend, the person that I've lived most of my life with, the person who actually is the reason that I'm in boxing today. But uh, something that I need to share with uh, the followers, the lovers of boxing, the followers of Lefa Onolo. And, you know, we used to joke about COVID. He was very, very, very sensitive. I would just talk or do things my way. And he would keep reminding me, hey, COVID, don't do COVID, don't do And, you know, one thing that I always said to him was that when it's time for one to go, you're definitely going to go whether by accident, whether by COVID, but all that I know is that God has given all of us days to live on this earth, and unfortunately, we cannot run away from that. Um, we have lost, we are hurt. TLB is no longer going to be the same without this phenomenon. But I want to thank everybody who has given us the support throughout this journey. Uh, we're hoping that we're going to continue this journey until we take him to his final uh, journey, the final place that will be on Saturday, the 10th. Certainly the 10th is my birthday. The 27th of July is Luther Honolo's birthday. We had planned a surprise party for him. And I was talking to the sisters to say, it looks like this is going to be the surprise that we're playing. Uh, Mama Haini, the family of Libaba, Lilega I think it's time that we say Baba Yusuf Honolo. He ran his place. I thank you. Uh, thank, you much, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Sister Joyce, Sister Joyce, for for that uh, testimony and and obviously, and, and obviously uh, 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 letting us know how this great how legend this passed, great passed legend away. Passed you know, away. and we thank you for the fact that you have been with him up until the end. Really appreciate it. And we must thank uh, Joyce Kumwani, TLB Boxing Promotions, 
for all the hard work that she's done, you know, in, in ensuring that, uh, you know, things went according to plan in terms of the memorial service. And also, uh, thank Dineo, you know, the uh, Lidwaba and Bukala family, the Kumwani family, and condolences, you know, and I know and I mean as much as everybody in this country, Africa, and the whole world sends their condolences to the family. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to call, uh, just to close off, uh, uh, Mr. Tsepole Dwaba, just to give us announcements. Over to you, Tsepole Dwaba. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank everyone who joined us in this movement. And actually, our hearts are very shattered. We're still having that pain, especially I was with my brother the time he passed on. I've been there for him. I was with him on Thursday at the Lister building. And on Friday, when he passed on, he called me and told me, no, hey, he used to call me in that, in that day, I'm not okay. Please leave your car there at home and come this side and use my car and take me to the hospital. Unfortunately, they were, they were renovating the street at Togoza Park. Then I, it dragged me almost two hours, took me two hours to arrive that morning. But when I arrived there, he was not okay. He was not the, the same person I was with on Thursday. He couldn't breathe. He was struggling to breathe until we decided to take him to the city. Then we put him in the car. We actually, he was sleeping in the car. We put him to sleep in the car. Then in, after two, about five minutes, five, three seconds, he woke up and sat straight. Then that's when he left us. I'd like to say thank you to all those who knew my brother. He was a humble guy. He was someone who never did anything wrong to someone. If you told you saw someone that was struggling, he will, he will go out and make sure that that person, whatever he's looking for, and whatever he wants, he get that person. We have my cousins, me. He took us to school, especially my mother was not working. We made sure that we we go to school and pay everything, our fees, everything. Actually, he was not a father for me. He was a father. We have lost someone who, who did everything for me. Actually, especially me, never wanted to do you know, never wanted anyone to do anything against me. He was always there for me. He would do, we couldn't even sleep without talking to each other. Even when he was sick, he never. When he started to seek, he never wanted them to tell me that he's sick because of, he was afraid that, oh, this squad is going to get stressed. Then until I knew, then that's where I started going to Mondio or Terminal, Terminal 2, going to check on him. But on that, I also like to say thank to, thanks to Zuki Swa from Kosa. She was there with the family. Mike, she was there with the family. Uh, Joyce Kumwani, they were there when my brother left us. We were all together at Mondio. Trying, we tried our best. We never knew that this that that's the last time we would have seen him again. But thanks for everyone, and I like to also to send my condolences to my family and. Thank you. And uh, the funeral will be at Naledi Hall. It starts at 10 o'clock for 11 o'clock, and it will be going straight to the Heroes Art in West Park Cemetery. I'd like to thank everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Tsepo, uh, the brother to uh, the late, great legend, Lesonolo, Hands of Stone, Ledwaba, former three-time world champion, um, always in our hearts. And we would like to thank the speakers that were with us this evening. Uh, Sumaya Khan from the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, Ms. Cindy Nkomo, 
it is really appreciated. You know, uh, Mr. Norman Sabani, his former trainer, um, Jan Bergman, uh, his friend, Jan Bergman and Diviwe, um, Kulisan and Dongeni, and of course, uh, Mama Joyce Kungwani, and Tsepo Lidwaba. And thank you very much to Sfiso Netsandama for getting us this link so that we can honor this le legend on online uh, a memorial service. And thank you to the Boxing Fraternity, to all of you that have been his friends, all of you that knew Lidwaba, all of you that followed Lidwaba, and really um, everyone in, in, in all the provinces, you know, the Eastern Cape, Western Cape, um, um, uh, uh, Northwest, Limpopo, um, Pumalanga, you know, all, all the provinces. We thank you very much. We know how hard uh, you've, you've supported the family and we know that you've been with them yeah, throughout. You're always with them in their hearts and we keep them in our prayers as well. And may this so may the soul of this great legend rest in peace. Uh, as you all know, as Tepo has said, you know the funeral is on Saturday, and of course, due to COVID protocols, uh, only a minimum number of people are allowed at the at the funeral. So, uh, but I'm sure we will talk with Joyce and uh, Sfiso. We might obviously have to have this live streamed again. You know the funeral. But thank you very much, and thank you, thank you, thank you on behalf of the family, Lidwaba Bukala and Kungwani. Thank you very much, and have a great evening.